one uh, special memory I have of Dadi Prakashmani was from 1986 when I was visiting Mount Abu for the third time and I was 25 years old. I had a very funny ticket and that ticket created a lot of problems along the way. And so I got stuck in Germany a few days, I got stuck in Bombay a few days, I got stuck in Ahmedabad. And before I reached Mount Abo, many days had already gone. And another problem was that my return ticket had been changed by the airline. And they said, you can only go back in after a month. And if that would actually put my job at risk. And so I explained this to sisters from London when I arrived in Mount Abo. And they said, okay, we will do all what we can to help you get a new ticket, but it also means that you will have to accept, meaning new return ticket, that means that you will have to accept whatever date we get. So be ready to, to return on a very short notice. And I accepted that because I understood the situation and also it's like you accept the rules of the game. And next morning I was meeting Dadi Prakashmani together with another group of newcomers, means the new arrivals. She would always meet us in the morning and uh, she asked us, um, um, when are you going back, each one of us, when is your return? She used to do that in those days. And so, of course, I didn't know when I was going back, I didn't have a clue. But for some reason, I said, I don't know where it came from, but I said, I'm returning in five days. And she was very surprised, of course, because we used to be allowed to stay for a month in those days. And she said, oh, in five days? And I, again, I said, yes. <laughs> but we never went into any details. She didn't ask me, you know, any details. and. Um, and I, I knew the sisters were working for me, so that was all that happened between us. And then, uh, as the days passed, I was living very much in the present, and I was taking an immense amount of benefit, and um, being so aware of the precious moments. And um, on the fifth day, I was sitting in the class, and suddenly I feel somebody knock at my shoulder and I knew that, okay, it's time to go back. And that was true, so that um, the sister who met me said that, uh, you know, we found a ticket for you, you have to leave this afternoon, and um, a brother will meet you in the courtyard of Panda Bhavan and be there at four o'clock. So I immediately went back to my room, I fixed everything I need to do practically, had my lunch, all of that, and then at four o'clock I was standing in the courtyard of Pandabhavan, which was absolutely empty and absolutely silent, because everyone was having their siesta, so this was resting time. And what happened then was, out of I don't know where, from nowhere, suddenly Tadi Komarka means Tadi Prakashmani, she approaches me she comes up to me and gives me a hug and then she leaves again and um, we didn't say anything i have no memory that we said anything it was just that a farewell hug that i suddenly got and there was no one else it was just her and me and then she was gone and i remember that i felt i had to steal a roller coaster travel on my way back, same stories, so many problems, but I reached back and um, but I felt completely protected. I had no worries at all and I connected that with, um, you know, this sense of being protected also connected with her care, but the care she showed me was not in a lot of words or investigations or questions about what had happened to me or you know, checking me out, nothing. But she must have been informed because she turned up at four o'clock in her own person and she has 
immense responsibilities. I mean, she had at that time immense responsibilities of a big, big organization. And who was I? Just one, one of many, many students. So she was showing her personal interest, but not in a lot of words. And for me, the, what I learned from that, and which I, I've so, seen in her a lot, was that she was very much aware of what was going on around her, but there was never an air of concern or worry. Never. She was always very light. But at the same time as she was known for being so light, she um, was also keeping herself informed, but never with a sense of control. And you know, many leaders uh, are controlling because feeling responsible. She felt responsible, but not responsible, because she was giving that responsibility up. You know, she was giving that to a higher source, not to herself. So being an instrument in that way, she was perfect example. And I felt that was a story that was worth sharing today. Love.